Hello colleagues, uh, my name is Belma Pekhlanovic and I'm a lecturer and researcher at the University of Sarajevo in Bosnia and Herzegovina as well I'm a team member of the Twice Women in Science and Education Group. Uh, FIP has released Fitwise Words videos alongside the launch of Fitwise on February 11, 2020, and it allows women and their male allies in science and education to discuss and uh, share their ideas and inspirational stories. So we are recording this as a part of Fitwise Words series, and today I'm here with Andrea Bruno Tome and Patricia Acuna Johnson to discuss how to motivate students and young women professional and in education and science so they pursue their careers in these uh, fields. Uh, Andrea is a senior strategist for McCann Health and she's also a project manager and a researcher with more of 10 years of experience in leading <coughs> uh, cross-functional teams and developing global innovation frameworks, programs, and strategies. And also Andrea leads the strategy of pharmaceutical workforce and education training programs and policies for organization members of FIP. Welcome, Andrea. And Thank you. Patricia is a professor at School of Chemistry and Pharmacy at Faculty of Pharmacy, University of Valparaiso in Chile. She has served in many senior management positions as Dean at the Faculty of Pharmacy, Academic Vice Rector and Deputy Rector. And nationally, she is the President of the National Autonomous Corporation of Pharmaceutical Specialities and the Advisor to the Ministry of Health on specific issues on behalf of the Chilean schools and faculties of pharmacies. Both Andrea and Patricia are members of the Wise Working Group, and it gives me a great pleasure to interview you both here today. So I will start this interview with my first question, and it goes to Andrea. Andrea, why have you decided to pursue your career in pharmaceutical science and pharmacy education, and what has been your biggest challenge as a woman in this field? Um, quite a funny story, um, to be fact. Uh, I think definitely is people and, and healthcare. So I've chosen pharmacy. Um, originally, I would like to go for marine biology. So that was always my big dream, uh, marine biology. And then at the very last minute, um, I started walking by pharmacies and uh, seeing the interaction of the pharmacists with the people and really thinking about um, looking at career options and how diverse pharmacy could be um, and decided that I wanted to do pharmacy. One of the reasons why um, I decided pharmacy at a time way back when um, was that I would want to be next to home, staying in my country in home. That didn't quite work out that well for me, uh, for the ones that uh, know me. Uh, I then, after finishing my degree, I moved uh, to London uh, to pursue a, a PhD. I then moved back to Portugal, uh, continuing working with associations and um, with FIP as well and other national associations, as you mentioned in my bio, and then moved to Melbourne, Australia to pursue a more academic role um, and a project management role um, and educator in a sense. And now back to uh, Lisbon, where I'm working uh, for um, a global communications company remotely, but in Lisbon. So as you can see, staying at near the house or staying in Portugal uh, didn't quite work out for me. So I think one of the challenges I had with my career was uh, finding what I was good at or what I was really wanting to do and then pursue pursuing um, that option even further. So that I would say, you know, diverse training in diverse fields. I, I can say I've done private sector, academia, NGOs, and, and all of them have different challenges. But I think the education and, and the pharmacy background gives you an opportunity and a breadth of um, a spectrum of areas and fields that you can can pursue that it's fantastic. And I don't think any other healthcare professional has that options of that diverse settings that you can then uh, follow. So that was really why I chose pharmacy. Thank you, Andrea. It's uh, good that you choose pharmacy beside marine biology. 
Thank you very much for your answer. And the same question goes to Patricia. So why have you, Patricia, decided to pursue your career in these fields? And what has been your biggest challenge as a woman in these fields? Well, thank you, Velma. Well, um, my, my story is quite, quite similar in, in some terms to, to Andrea, because um, initially I wanted to, I wanted to study architecture. <laughs> <laughs> there was no relationship at all. But then I, I, I had second, second thoughts and I, I, uh, to, I decided to study something related to science mm -hmm. and particularly in, in applied sciences. Traditionally in Chile, the higher education uh, system forces you, forces students to decide early what career uh, mm -hmm. path you're going to take. So therefore the models that one has in school are very important, I mean the teachers. And so my decision had to do with the fact that I really liked science, especially biology and chemistry. And I had a chemistry prof uh, teacher that he was great. So he never knew that I just loved uh, chemistry because of him, because he was such a good teacher. And because I, I I, all, I also wanted to study something applied to, to human beings. Mm -hmm. I decided to study pharmacy. Then later, uh, when I uh, was a student, a pharmacy student, actually chemistry and pharmacy student, I, um, I was wondering what, what I was going to do with my future professional uh, life. And I, um, my decision, in, in, terms, in terms of becoming uh, an academic has to do with a vocation that I felt uh, early as a pharmacy student. I loved chemistry, as I said. So uh, initially I thought I wanted to develop my career in research and, and teaching in pharmacology. Well, the roads of life are led me in another direction, although I never stopped uh, teaching pharmacology. I developed my career, academic career in senior management at the University of Valparaiso, where I have worked all my life. And um, this led me to uh, develop myself in a pharmacy education. I just love what I do. If I had to choose again, I would do everything, all the same thing, all the same decisions I, I, I took during my life. And uh, so I always, I have always felt very, very happy uh, with my decision. Um, regarding the second part of the question, I think for a woman in science, what is most uh, difficult is to um, try to coordinate uh, the academic and science career with home, because especially when you live in a country where um, stereotypes uh, and man stereotypes are very important. So I, I thought and I, 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 I thought and I said, well, that was not going to be a problem. I will try to coordinate both things. And I think that I, I was able to do it quite well. I am married and I have three girls all grown up already, <laughs> but I, <laughs> have very grown up already, but I feel everything, I, I feel very happy because I, I think I could coordinate being a woman, being in science, being in higher ed education, and uh, being a, a housewife, a mom, everything. I think that's it. <laughs> Thank you, Patricia. It's a, such an incredible and inspirational story. Thank you very much. Well, my next question for you uh, would be, um, over the time, have you, I mean, particularly in this part of COVID pandemics in the world that everything that's happening, have you noticed any changes in the number of female students uh, or career choices of young women professionals in the field of science and education? Andrea, you can answer first, please. Um, sure, of course. Um, I think 
to be honest, I'm not quite sure there has been that much of a difference that it's noticeable in terms of numbers. I don't have that data, but I do think um, now there are more role models. There are more female CEOs. There are more um, healthcare focus on on females. And just the example of Patricia, you know, um, we can have it all in a sense. It's about balance. It's about having the professional life and the personal life, regardless of what genre you are, but in a sense that nowadays the word is out. We can do it. Anyone can do it. And, and I think um, traditionally, at least in the countries that I've um, taught, uh, female were quite high in terms of um, number of percentage of students enrollment. Um, there has always been some uh, data around that um, in terms of female numbers. So I think there has always been tentatively more women in pharmacy um, as a profession than, than our male counterparts. But that doesn't really reflect sometimes on the leadership positions that um, women held. Uh, and I think now more and more, and you know, we do have our first female CEO at FIP, um, and, and that's very important. It, it provides representation to young female, to young professionals, and sharing the stories like, you can have it all. You can be married or not married. It's up to you. You can start your profession later in life or early in life. You can have kids. You don't have to have kids necessarily. And I think that breaking those silos and breaking those expectations of a female must do this, this, and this, it's starting to, to fall apart. Um, not in all countries, of course, we do know and are, are aware of it, but I think definitely there has been a more um, healthcare focus on patients, which uh, we tend to have that more nurturing side. That doesn't mean that um, we only have that, but I think females tend to be a little bit more empathetic, um, nurturing, and being pulled more for uh, healthcare professionals due to that. And pharmacy is a good example of that. Um, so not quite sure if the pandemic has helped or hindered, uh, if we look at, you know, everyone doing everything from home, uh, all of what even Patricia just described in her uh, perfect way of, of balancing, you know, thinking about you don't have to go to an office, but you have your kids with you um, or at home. And how can you deal with that? Um, but it's also good to know that I think pharmacists have rise to the occasion, females especially have rise to the occasion and saying, you know, we, we can do it. And of course we need to be um, attentive and, and caring, uh, but also continue with our professions and, and doing our things. So I think uh, the, the role and all of that has, has merged with the, the counterpart, regardless if it's female, male um, or other in a sense. So it's really about having that inclusiveness. And I think that's what um, I think females achieved a little bit more on um, during the pandemic and healthcare professionals, uh, regardless. It's, it's about show, show, uh, showing up, doing what you need to do, caring for the patient, and, and having that role models um, more visible, that mentorship aspect of, you know, if, if she can do it, I can do it as well, is having that little push. That's what I found, um, but again, no data on that uh, yet. Yeah, unfortunately. Thank you, thank you very much, Andrea. And uh, the same question goes for you, Patricia. What is your opinion about this issue? Well, um, the the percentage of uh, women, females in uh, pharmacy courses is about. Uh, between 65 to 70 percent female students. And during this pandemic period, I wouldn't say that the number of, of female students have gone down. Mm. Um, it's just about the same as always. However, um, I would say that the, the uh, difficulties for them uh, have been a lot more uh, important during this period. For many reasons, many of those that I mentioned uh, mentioned it already, 
uh, because they had to, they have had to manage uh, balancing stu uh, studies and home at the same time. Because many of our, not many, but quite a good number of our female students are, are, are mothers as well. And, uh, and they are the head of the household. Uh, of our household. So um, they have had um, more difficulties, uh, but despite of it, um, they have gone forward. They have come forward very well and have had excellent results. So at the same time, the university um, and the School of Pharmacy as well have been in charge of supporting the students, especially female students during this pandemic. So they, uh, as I said before, um, the number ha hasn't gone down, but the, the, the number of problems, let's say, um, have been a little more um, specifically difficult for them. So um, I, 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 I agree with Andrea that fortunately, the, the female model uh, nowadays um, show, uh, shows you that uh, women can do everything. It, maybe it will be a little more difficult, but they can do mm -hmm. it. So if they feel, and if we as teachers, we tell them, don't worry, we know what is your problem, but we are here to help you and mm -hmm. to support you. And everything works out very, very well. And they understand that this is not easy, but at the same time, um, they it's not easy, but they give you more force to keep going and to pursue your um, your uh, intentions and you and your your dreams. On that note, I actually just learned just to add something. Sorry, I forgot, and I think it 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 goes really nicely. I've just learned an acronym, uh, the acronym of fail. But it's actually, you know, first um, attempt in learning in a way. And it's so good to say and, and sharing those um, experiences as well, not just the good ones, but also uh, the ones that you had challenges and you had to overcome challenges. And I think those examples and, and having that experience and sharing also not just good things, the bad things and, you know, the frustrations of having you know, a dog that barks or ch children that screams, or you have to attend to your mom um, mm. because you're all in, in the same boat. I think that's what the pandemic really showed us. It's, it's becoming a little bit more empathetic in terms of we all have other things in our life going on, not just mm. our studies. And this is important to, to, to have and to create awareness. And, and it's okay to seek help. It's okay to ask for um, support. And, and I think that's truly what has risen as well from the pandemic. I do apologize. I cut you, Velma. Go ahead. No, no, Thank you. Thank you. It's, it's, it's so very incredible good. To, to listen to your uh, opinions. And I'm very delighted to have you both here. I would love to have more time for this interview. But um, to, to wrap it up for then, um, I will start my last question to you. Um, so uh, what is it, in your opinion, the best way or best tool to motivate young students and young women professionals to, to pursue their careers in these fields in pharmaceutical science and education? Uh, and Jura, you, you can answer first. Sure, I'm, um, I'm, I'm happy to go first. I think it, it goes back to, um, and I'm connecting the conversation to what Patricia mentioned the very first uh, answer um, to, to her question, to question number one, which was um, she had a professor and she really loved that, um, that discipline because of the professor. So I think now what I would say is it's all about mentorship, the connections that you make and the network, the coaching, the creation of these types of forums of these types of things that allow um, young women to see and to know that there's far uh, a, a, a scope far beyond the possibilities of just you know community pharmacy or hospital pharmacy or academia you can be you can be very good in any field and and science especially and we do have an example during covid of someone developing the vaccine who you know Email. So it's about 
creating those examples, making sure that it's um, that they are out there, that they are spoken about, and more and more having that um, represent representativeness. Sorry, and that diverse aspect of of all women, all shape, all form, and having these. Um, leadership roles and and not and by leadership I don't mean just as CEOs I mean as even students if you look at the International Pharmaceutical Student Federation and also FIP and even the young pharmacist group within FIP there are a lot of very very talented young women who have good positions um, and and are pushing the agenda of women forward so I do think um, that would be possibly the way to connect even more, creating this space. And I do think um, FIPWISE is doing an amazing job of putting all of this out there to, to make sure that there's a more outreach um, and to say it's okay, there's diverse pathways, there's no, no single line of um, you should do this to achieve that. There's you know a whole bunch of and going backwards and forwards and going in um, a different direction and coming back and, and changing. And that's all okay. It's part of the learning. It's part of the process. Um, and it's part of who you then become. So I would say be curious, be fearless, and, and, and go out and um, attempt things and see what you like and what you really want to pursue. Thank you. I really like your words, and it's a very, very good advice for a young professional. Thank you, Andrea. Um, same questions go for you, Patricia. Oh, thank you, Velma. Well, I agree with Andrea. <laughs> really, I, I can, I, I couldn't agree more. Um, I think that um, an, an issue, an, a very important issue, is to. Um, I, I'm talking as a, as a teacher. As an academic, I see my students every day, even online. Mm -hmm. And so I think that you have to motivate them with models. Mm -hmm. You have to show who you are um, as a human being, not only as a, as, a, as a pharmacist or as a professional, uh, let's say. Um, so that means that the, you have to show them that no matter what happens in, in, in your life, um, as a human being, you have to show them your successes and your failures and that you are able to start all over again. Because I always say that to my students, it doesn't matter how long does it take for you to, uh, to finish your career, your, your, student, your studies. What it matters is that you grow during all this period and you take some examples from everything, not only from your success, but only from your failures. So um, models, models, I think it's, it, it is very important. Um, the, 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 my students always tell me that they feel, and it's not because I am a, a hero or something like that, but they say to me that they can feel that I like, I, I, they, they can feel that I really enjoy uh, being a pharmacist, I really enjoy being an educator, and uh, so they like they like to to see that to to feel that because they want to be the same uh, when they finish uh, their studies and they become uh, a pharmacist. Um, the other thing that I have I will say to them is that the road is not easy, as I said before. Mm -hmm. Too might be difficult, more difficult for, uh, to others, uh, but is, is challenging. And everything can be achieved with effort, with love and with determination. And um, I think that is it's very important adding at the same time what Andrea already mentioned. This is my, uh, my point yeah. of view about this question. I, I do completely agree and to say that it's all about passion. It's all about mm -hmm. finding where the passion is. It, don't settle for the first thing, try different things, find your passion, you'll be far happier. And, you, and that shows, that shows um, when you, know, you teach or you have in contact with patients and it's different. It's different from feeling um, if you truly want to do what you want to do. Um, so mm -hmm. definitely uh, subscribing to all of what Patricia mentioned now. 
yes, and I could definitely say you both are such incredible role models to every young professional in pharmacy, and I'm very happy and delighted to have you both mm -hmm. here today. Thank you. Thank you very much for your time and for sharing your experience and your stories. And uh, we are overwhelmed and delighted to have such wise members and to that conduct this interview with you. Uh, thank you very much for your time and we are looking forward to hear from you in future. All the best. Thank you, thank you. Belma, for the invitation. Thank you. Thank you for, exactly. Thank you, Pipwise, <laughs> and thank you, Belma, for yes, the invitation. Yes, Pipwise. Yes. <laughs>